Welcome back to the shop here at Basin Motorsports. I'm Kanan. Today I'm going to show you how to adjust the speed on your machine because a lot of times newer sewers or newer upholsters or people that just change machines want to know how do I make this thing so slower. Now assuming you have a good machine you either bought a brand new machine or you've changed machine or you've done something to your current machine like gone from a clutch to a servo motor and now you want to slow it down. So before we jump into part change or anything else, let's make sure the basics of the machine function well, because what I found on my brand new NC6 that I bought recently is that there are a couple things that I wanted to check to make sure that they functioned easier. So when I started sewing at the beginning, where it just kind of tips in, the needle starts moving, there are some things you can do to make sure that goes a little bit more smoothly rather than you step on the pedal and it goes, yeah, and takes off. Now, regardless of what brand machine you have or brand servo motor, there's going to be probably a dial on it that indicates the speed at which it's going to turn. On my NC6 here, I've got it on the lowest setting. Zero right here means it is not going to spin at all. It can next go to 350, 660, 970, 1280, all the way up to 3450. Now the lowest speed there is obviously 350 RPM, and a lot of times, as you're brand new to sewing, that is still too fast. So here are a couple things I want you to check before we start adjusting pulleys or anything else. Now one thing I found on my foot pedal was that these metal brackets were actually leaned in and contacting the side of the foot pedal. That was causing a little bit of friction and drag so that when I put pressure down on the foot pedal, it was actually kind of scraping if you would say it that way it was applying resistance to the pedal moving forward so all i had to do here was just create a little space i just bent these away from the foot pedal and now it easily moves without having to have friction against these so double check you don't have any here now the second thing i'll say is go ahead and adjust your pedal height a lot of times people want it up like it's a gas pedal and really it should be more flat with the floor somewhere close to that to make it easy just to dip your toe down to start sewing now one thing i changed on mine was where this attachment rod was it was actually on the inside of this pedal or the far side away from the machine and what it was doing was causing it to come up at an angle versus straight up and down so now you can see that the rod is straight up and down, makes it a lot easier. That way you're not trying to pull at an angle on the machine, a little bit easier direct from the pedal to pull the machine down. Another thing you can check is that your connection point here on your lever on your machine is all the way furthest away from the machine and the furthest away hole. That will make sure that your machine has the longest lever, which makes the machine work easier rather than harder so if this was closer in it would take more pressure on your foot pedal which makes it harder to control and control the speed now beyond those two you could always adjust your placement on the foot pedal you can move it farther away from the pivot or more towards the end towards the machine or the servo motor by adjusting that it helps with the amount of pressure or the amount of travel of the pedal it may give you a little bit better feel and then just i will say you need to sew especially if it's a brand new machine while it does come sewn off it does come full of oil what i found is that i've ran about five bobbins through this machine already and each bobbin it seems like it gets a little bit easier because oil has penetrated down through the bearings everything else and i don't want to say it has to wear in but i'll tell you what running this machine more has either made the machine easier to move or it's made me more confident in the machine moving. And either way, sewing is the way to go. But I know this isn't exactly a tips video, it's more of how do I really do it? Okay, so here is a tip. And it's gonna require a little bit of disassembly of the machine, so you might like this or you might not. On your servo motor, there's gonna be a pulley. Now this pulley is where the belt comes in, and these are gonna be in diameter about 75 to 70 millimeters. That's approximately three inches. What happens if you change this pulley to a smaller diameter pulley? Well, it's going to make the motor spin faster to the same amount of movement in your machine, or it's going to technically make your machine spin slower for the same amount of spin in your servo motor. Either way, it's going to give you a little bit easier control. And if you want it to go faster, well, you either make the pulley diameter larger 
or to turn the machine up, right? I've got it on the lowest setting. If I want one faster, it'll make the machine faster, or I can just turn it down to the first setting and change the pulley. Now here's how you're gonna change this pulley, and it's gonna be really pretty simple. First, I'm gonna take the machine and I'm going to tip it up. That way I can take the belt off the machine and take it off the pulley down below. Once we have our belt loose, we're gonna go ahead and take off our cover, which is just gonna be our two screws holding it on. Now the pulley is gonna be held onto the shaft with probably a small set screw. So you're gonna go ahead and take your tools. It's probably an Allen key or something else. You're gonna loosen it and then go ahead and take it off. Now from the pulley that comes off, there may be a collar that comes out of the center that you need to transfer over to the new pulley itself. You also may need to transfer over the set screw if it doesn't come with one. And what I'm gonna show you is a 3D printed pulley that I designed and printed here in the shop. Now this uses the same exact collar that comes off the original pulley. It also uses the same exact set screw. So I just need to take this out of the original pulley, put it into my new pulley, and what I'm changing it to is from a 75 millimeter diameter to a 45 millimeter diameter pulley. Now once you have the new pulley put on, you're gonna tighten your set screw, put on your belt up around the machine. You can also put on your cover here, and then we can start sewing. Now running a smaller pulley, what is it gonna do? Well, it will change the speed. So here's what it looked like previously with the 75 millimeter pulley. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult to start, not terrible to do but it will go pretty fast if you want it to. Now here's the update with the smaller pulley, and that's just a little bit of pressure to make the machine move. Now this is all gonna be about personal taste, personal skill, whatever you wanna call it. I like the smaller pulley. I feel like it gives me the chance to go even lower if I want to, and if I want more speed, well, I can just dial up the motor and make it go faster. The hardest part is making it go slower especially when you want to go stitch by stitch by stitch because you're working on something critical or very hard to do. Now just note that changing this pulley to a smaller diameter on the servo motor means that your current settings on your belt tension and everything else will not work. You're either going to have to drop your motor down further to take up that, that space or that diameter, so you need either a shorter belt or to drop your motor down. Now what I did here is because I can 3D print my own pulley and I had special washers here, washers big enough and thick enough to our good base, I just dropped the motor down about an inch. Now that took it up there. Otherwise, if you wanna buy a pulley online, they do make them, I've seen them in cast aluminum for about 10 bucks or so. And then you got shipping on top of that, plus you need to buy an additional smaller belt. And that's gonna vary a little bit by machine, so I can't tell you go by X length, you're going to have to probably go to an auto parts store, take your current belt, and then go in there and buy one that's probably an inch or two shorter and adjust the height as you need to for the tension. So hopefully that answers your questions of how do I do it? Well, you can swap pulleys, but first make sure your basics on your machine aren't fighting you or making it difficult for you. Take care of those, then swap the pulley if you need to. And for probably less than 20 bucks shipped, maybe 30 bucks by the time you swap a belt out, you can have the machine in your dreams. That's it for this time. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the comments section. Unfortunately, because I did everything DIY, I really don't have any links to stuff out there. I'll go out there to Amazon and see what I can find and throw some links down for extra pulleys. Now just remember, you have to size them based on the size of the collar or the shaft that they go to, plus the diameter of them. Most of the time the belts are pretty standard, but even then double check yourself before you hit that buy button to make sure you don't have to return it and do something else. Any other questions or comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.